Well, lads, it's me, Mark Mullins, here for minutes. This is a message back to John Rambo O'Loughlin. He said, I'm Martin Creed Mullins, whatever that means, I'm a torture man. But I call you John the Rambo Shadow Boxer. That's, that's, all you, that's all I see you doing. Right, John, I'm going to answer the last thing he said there about me and you spar. Yeah, John, me and you did do a, a spar here uh, a, a few months ago back. You were training for a fight uh, and you sent, uh, you got a person to ring me saying that you, you, you're looking for a spar. I said, no problem at all. I wasn't training for a fight and I still sparred you. We sparred John for 15 or 20 minutes. I had, an, I, I had an injury in my leg and I still went out sparring on you, as you knew and the other person knows that asked, that asked me for the spare you knew that also. Um, John, you're absolutely talking nonsense, which the whole town of Venice and the whole country knows. You're an absolutely shy talker. I heard you done enough talking the last time about you were knocking this man out, not, not knocking that man out. You knocked nobody out, only putting your ass yourself. Anyway, besides all that point, John, in their spar, John, with, with big 16 ounce slow side, John. I knocked you, I never knocked you, or I just saved you, I did, when I hit you uh, two shots, side, John, I had to grab you, you your eyes rolled in front of me, and I had to grab you, because uh, you were going to the ground. And I asked you, were you all right, to take a, to, to take a break for a second, because your two eyes rolled in front of me, and your legs have been stiff, and you're going to the ground. And I swear on my dead father, and I swear on my dead child, that that's the truth, John. So the mind are fucking bullshit talking. But anyway, I, I never read a spar talk about a spar. That's only a bit of a spar. I spar a lot of different, different fellas around the place. Good, bad, no. You don't talk about spars, right? That's your soft gloves. Right, John. How this happened was this, John. The might, you missed a little part, John, about your wife. You brought your wife into this, John. I'll tell exactly what happened now, Rambo. Well, I... Mm -hmm. You... I'll, I'll jealous, John. I'll tell exactly what happened, John. You and Dan, John, you rang me yesterday, and you said you're talking to your wife, and that... I was up at the Bank of Ireland, which it was, and that your wife was up at the Bank of Ireland, and that I was staring at her. I told you I didn't see your wife, now I don't even know what your wife looks like. Your wife standing in front of me, I said I couldn't tell if it was your wife or not. But John, you said that she said I was staring at her, but I told you that never happened. I said, John, I said, if a person, just because a person is looking in a direction, say John, and another person comes in, the, in that person's eye view, I said, that's not <laughs> And John, you didn't, John, you accepted that. But we had a couple of words on the phone, and you turned around and said, because if I knew, if I knew that uh, a man had a problem with my wife, me and him would have to go to the road and, and sort it out. And I told you back to you, well, John, if that's the case, John, that's the kind of attitude you have, said John. I'm in Tuckley right now. I'm down here in Famous's house, which old famous old black fella, you know him and I know him, which is only around the corner from your house. So I come down here, said John, so I'm sort it out. You turned around and said back to me, John, that no, you wouldn't run people's houses. I said, that's fair enough, I said. I said, go and meet me, I said, to Astro Field, I said, which is right beside your house. And I said, right beside Famous's house, in the middle. And I said, I'll meet you there. And you would meet me there. I stayed in Famous's house for, for about 10 or 15 minutes after chatting the man. I left there then. And then, when I, when I went back, uh, we, yeah, I, I left there then, I went back home to my own house. In the meantime, like I said, me and you were, me and you were on the phone still before I left Famous's house. And we had a couple of words over and back, and you said to me that you're uh, that you're known all over the country for fighting, and that you're up on YouTube fighting, and that people rate you, and you're highly rated, and that it's on YouTube clear to be seen. So I turned to you, well, say John, so you've heard a lot of shy talk. I said I'm one man, so I don't rate you. I said I, I said also say John, so I'm one man, so he's not bothered about you, or not bothered about better than you, and I'm telling you now. I'm not bothered about you, or I'm not bothered about better than you. That's exactly what I said to you, John. So you turn around and said then that, um, well, if that's the case, then Martin, we'll go to the road, you get a fair plan, I get a fair plan, we'll sort it out. I said, that's no problem, John. I said, but you give me a better reason, said, for, said look for trouble, so I didn't tell a lie that I was looking say, say at your wife, so I stared at your wife, so which is a fucking lie, I said. So I therefore, like I told you, if, I, uh, if a woman was worth staring at, I'd stare at her, and I told you I didn't stare at your wife. So that's exactly how that was, said John. I, to, I told you, then, John, the way this looks is that you have another hidden issue with me. And I said, John, if you're a man enough, say, come up and say if you have an issue with me, and John, I would sort, I, I said, we'd sort out the problem then. But so John, say, you turn around told me that you had no other issue with me, that we never had a fallen out in our life, that we never, never had an ignorant over each other. And I'd agree with you, and I thought the same thing. And you turned around and said, then, well, if, if that's the case, didn't matter. Look, if it didn't look, if it didn't, if it didn't stay, didn't stay, or we, we leave it at that, and, and that was it. So that was it, John, you got off the phone. I stayed in famous house, like I said, for another 10 or 15 minutes after. When I left there, when I left there, John, I went down out, out home. In the meantime, you ring me back again when I, I was about two minutes ago. 
I was, I was two or three minutes back in my house, John. And when I was two or three minutes back in my house, you rang the phone again. So I basically had the same conversation for the second time, and you basically said the same words, and I basically said the same words, and you come out the same <laughs> thing. If, if nothing happened, that if nothing, uh, well, if, it wasn't, if that was the case, then if there was no steering anywhere, that fair enough, we'll leave it at that and forget about it, and that'll be that. I said, that's fair enough, I said, I said, I said John, I said, I get told you five times already. I said, there's no steering. I said, if your woman comes in eye view, I said, I said, in future, I said, she doesn't want to come in, come in my eye view. So if she won't be in, in my eye view, so when she sees me, say, what behind me? So therefore, I say, I can't look at her. And I, I said, I asked you, said, the very start when you come on the phone, say, John, so you cutting his ears. I said, because I thought you were missing. Because that's the most stupidest thing in the world to, to start an hour when I pick an hour when about someone staring. Uh, right, lads, uh, this is Bart Mungs here, give me a minute, someone rang the phone and I put a stop to the thing recording, right? So based on anyway, John, as I was saying, there's a very, very stupid reason and a lie that, to cause an argument for, uh, to say that someone st stared at, at, at your woman. A bit different story, if it was something said to her, or she was tortured, this and that, so you'd you have all the reason in the world, like I also told you on the phone yesterday, and you agreed. And you also agreed at the end of the two phone calls, John, that, well, yeah, that's, that's fair enough, didn't matter. Look, if it didn't happen, it didn't happen, we, we'll leave it at that and, and say no more about it. And I said, that's fair enough, said John, said, that's that. So then, John, I, I, like I said, I'm here in Dublin. You, you went out to, to a man's place there this morning, and told the man that you wanted to fight, the man ring me. So I was talking to the man and I passed the message back to the man. I said, no public hall. I said, when does he want to fight? I said, and the man Tyrone said to me that he said he put down two thousand pound kick money on Monday and he'd fight in two months' time. So I said back to the man, I said, no, I said, that won't happen. I said, you can't sit for a fight. I said, no, which I also said is, John, you should know enough about, uh, about this because you claim to be an elite bare-knuckle fighter. Uh, so you claim to be all of that, John. So therefore, you should know enough about about how these rules and conditions goes, right? And the rules are, when a man sins for a fight, the other man picks the date. You sin for a fight, you went to the man's place this morning, and you said you wanted to fight me. I told that man that I'm up the country, and I won't be back in the evening time. That if I was down in this right now, that the fight happened in a half an hour's time. I turned around and, and said then, that what I'll do is said, we'll fight tomorrow, I said at two, three o'clock tomorrow. I said, when I'm down, I said, no problem at all whatsoever. So I said, that's, that's what they're, so the man said, no problem, he said he'd go back and pass the message back to you. The man ring me back then, John, five minutes after saying that you want your, your, your two, your two months training because you're not fit, you're not boxing fit, you do no box training, all this carry on. So I turned around and I told the man, I said, look, hold it for a second, I said, um, to the man, I said, I said, John is always training, I said, never stops training, I said, like myself, I said, I said, John has been seen and shows himself sat on the face with this and that. I said that he's running on the road, so he's doing a bit of training. And I said, I've been doing the exact same thing. I said, there is no boxing training for anybody. He said, all them places is closed. I said, we all know that part of it. I said, also, I said, I said, I'm 33 years of age. He's a young man. I said, at 24, 25 years of age, so whatever he is. I said, he don't drink or smoke. I said, I don't drink or smoke. I said, but yet, I said, I'll have a few drinks. I said, I said, and that. I said, like I had, I said, two nights ago, I said, for Paddy's night. I said, drinking, I said. And I said, there should be no excuse on none of us. I said, so we go out the road tomorrow, I said, to the man. And I said, we'll get it over done tomorrow. I said, forget about the kick of money. I said, forget about the money. I said, I said, there's no real short of money. I said, I said, there's no need talking about money. I said, we we'll go through it tomorrow. I said, we get it. I said, we we'll get it done. I said, that's exactly what I said. So that was the last, that was the last thing I heard. That was the last time I heard. I got I got the more phone calls back, John, and that's that's what it is there. So, John, my, my word to you is this: Is is a project to say talk like a toucher said? I fight you no problem. I have no problem at all whatsoever fighting you. No problem thoughts ever fighting you. You sit for a fight and we'll fight tomorrow. It's as simple as that. We'll fight tomorrow whether you like it or not. You don't sit for a fight and you can't pick a date. You have as much training done as I've, I've I've training done. There's none of us super fit, there's none of us killers. I am no killer and you're definitely no killer. So John, what we do is this, we go out the road tomorrow, the mind the bullshit talk, uh, the minute that you're talking a while ago, him and his young friends come out and show us fair play tomorrow, and we get it over done tomorrow. There's no four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, ten weeks, there's none of that carry on at all. We get it over done tomorrow. If you're a man enough, you're sin for a fight, you're sin over a fight through jealousy, over a lie and a butcher's story. I, I, don't know why, I don't know what your wife and back said things like that. I don't know, I was trying to flatter herself about what the story was. It never happened, your told never happened. You accepted it just today, but now you've a different story today. But anyway, so the point of the story, you have your fight, your fight is there tomorrow. Get back to me, you want your fight tomorrow. Tomorrow. If not, John, that's no problem. We will see each other around the place and, and things will be done around the place, John. 100%. Don't worry about that.